Welcome back. Once again, my name is Laura Page. I'm part of the curatorial team here, here, not here, but at the MCA. We are here today at South Shore Cultural Center and thrilled to be here. Thank you to the staff here at South Shore Cultural Center for being such amazing hosts. Thanks to you all for coming out. It's such a pleasure to see you all here. And um, I'm just thrilled to be here making introductions for these panelists on stage behind me. Um, this is the second to last program in, uh, for today's series of events. Um, we, let's see. Um, yeah, the occasion for today's program is prompted by this um, art installation up here. It's called the um, recapturing Memories of the Black Ark. It's by artist Gary Simmons, whose work is on view at an exhibition at the MCA all summer long. Um, feel free to, if, if it piques your interest, I hope you'll come up to the MCA sometime over the course of the summer. Um, I want to uh, introduce our chief curator, Ren Renee Morales, who's going to say just a couple more words about the Black Ark and today's programming. Thank you, Laura Page. Hi, everybody. Hello. Uh, w welcome, welcome. Yes, uh, my name is Rene Morales, as Laura Page just mentioned, and um, well, this is loud, uh, especially for folks who weren't uh, with us earlier today and heard my introduction earlier. I just wanted to jump in and first of all, welcome you all. Thank you also for coming and um, provide a little bit of context for what we're doing here today. Uh, as Laura Page mentioned, the platform and the speakers behind me here are a sculptural installation by the artist Gary Simmons, whose 30-year retrospective is currently on view at MCA downtown until October 1st. I hope you're able to see it. Um, one of the major themes of Gary's work is uh, that he focuses on the various cultural spaces through which uh, bodies, people, particularly people of color and people of different uh, identities, different gender identifications, etc., are presented and um, rep are represented in our culture, uh, whether it be movies, um, TV, sports, uh, music, etc. Um, Gary is also very interested in how we can kind of take control back of those spaces how folks, how people of color in particular, can uh, work together through community to create opportunities to uh, be able to control how they are represented and how they are, uh, how they, how they are made to come together. Um, and um, that's very much the idea of this uh, project here. This is a platform and speakers that are meant to travel, and as they travel around the world, uh, each host venue uh, presents a series of programs uh, celebrating the local performance histories of that place. And of course, we're talking about Chicago, which like, it couldn't get any richer, right? As far as rich performance histories, uh, it's just a wealth for us to work from here. Um, so uh, something I should mention is the wood of the speakers behind you there, that's wood that was reclaimed from the streets of New Orleans in the wake of Hurricane Katrina. So this is material that has absorbed some of the most indescribably painful memories of our whole history. Um, Gary's hope is that as this work travels around the world, as it becomes uh, a venue for incredibly excellent uh, performance histories like what we've uh, ex been exposed to today and what we will uh, continue to experience today. Um, that, uh, in a sense, uh, we're generating, we're absorbing new memories and gener generating new opportunities. And uh, again, creating a space where um, folks can really uh, uh, celebrate and uh, come together and create uh, a new sense of, of unification. Um, so on that note, uh, I want to just redouble uh, Laura Page's thanks uh, to all of you for coming, to MCA's incredible staff, um, the great, our great partners here at uh, the uh, Cultural Center, our great, the great partners that we've been working with all day uh, to uh, uh, celebrate uh, this occasion. Um, and with that, 
Thank you very much. I'm going to pass it back to Laura Page, who's going to tell you a little bit about what you're about to see. Thank you. Very quickly, I just wanted to um, introduce our programming partner for today. Um, we've been working with Maida McNeil and her team at Honeypot Performance, and she has um, it is organized this wonderful activity in the foyer uh, as a part of her Chicago Black Social Culture Map Project, which maps um, social cultural history in Chicago um, all over the city. You can um, scan in photographs and flyers and uh, mark down on ma large maps of the city um, sites across town where um, parties and underground cultural activities have taken place over, over time. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Meta to give a little bit more context about that and to introduce our speakers. All right. Um, afternoon, evening, as we get on. Uh, I'm going to make this short because I really want the meat of this time to be this uh, conversation that I have been waiting for about dance. Anytime we get to feature dance as part of the Chicago Black Culture Map, I am uh, excited and joyful because it is, uh, the, it, it's the music and it's the culture, but it is also the movement, the stories that are uh, carried in the bodies. Um, and so um, this, uh, uh, the Chicago Black Social Culture Map is about a 10-year-old uh, initiative of Honey Pop Performance that came out of a performance uh, project. It came out of dance and music. Um, and we, were map we wanted to map uh, the stories um, of um, house music's forebears, right? The things that we heard and practiced in a club space that we knew were older than uh, house music. And uh, so that is some of what you can do out, outside is to share some of those spaces, the stories, the people who uh, are the forebears of what house music will become here. Um, all right, so I'm gonna kick it over to our co-moderators and I'm so excited to have Ray Chardonnay and Erica Jarvis co-moderate uh, both. <laughs> Uh, both with heavy chops in the uh, both DJ and kind of movement uh, realm uh, of house and nightlife in Chicago. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and just kick it over to you and let you tell the folks some more about yourselves, and then go ahead and introduce our panelists. So thank you. Uh, good early evening, everyone. My name is Ray Chardonnay. I'm a DJ and event curator and specialist in many other things, aware of many hats in the city of Chicago. Um, I am just thrilled to be here. Thank you, Maida and Honey Pot Performance and MCA for the work that you steward so beautifully and so, uh, so dynamically. So thank you so much for having me be a part of this panel. Um, should I do like more of me now? Okay, fine. And then I'll hand it to Erica. Um, <clears throat> my, my panel, my, uh, what did you call this thing? Bio is there. I don't know if you can see it somewhere. Um, but that's the gist of who I am. But I think something I'll start with is how I came to house music and how I came to dance. Um, as a child, I was always walking around the house rapping and shaking my little tail feather. And my mother could not understand why. So she sent me off to my godmother, who was a dancer with Homer Bryant back in the day before it was Chicago Multicultural Center for Dance. And I started dancing, taking ballet, jazz, tap, hip hop, and that was how I came to dance. But later down the line, I came to learn about music and how it made me move and how um, special it was to me. And so I kind of put dance to the side and I became a dancing DJ. Um, if you know me, if you see me, DJ, you know that I will be dancing at the same time. Um, I need to feel that rhythm. Um, and so that's, that is the short end of how and why I'm here. I'm also the co-founder of a collective called Party Noir that we've been throwing parties for now. September makes eight years that we've been throwing parties. Thank you. Um, and it's, it's throwing parties, but it's also deeply a cultural um, and spiritual space. So wherever we are, it always feels um, deep in the spirit, 
deep in the spirit, but we're housed at the promontory. Um, yeah, on a seasonal basis, I guess. Look us up, and I'm gonna hand it off to Erica because I feel like I've been talking too much already. Good afternoon, good evening. My name is Erica Jarvis. I am the founder and creator and producer of Creative Soul Entertainment. I am also um, a person that wears uh, a couple of hats. Um, I like to impersonate, so I impersonate Josephine Baker, Dorothy Dandridge, uh, Diana Ross, uh, Sade, and I've done Lena Horne. So um, I like to um, spread my wings a little bit. I'm also a dancer. Um, I'm a student of Columbia College, Chicago, um, but I have my uh, degree in fashion merchandising from uh, Illinois Academy Design and Technology. <laughs> I'm so used to saying IADD. So, um, but I am, I'm also um, a host and producer for other shows throughout Chicagoland area and the Twin Cities. So if you're from Minneapolis, I'm also there sometimes. Um, what else? I'm an author, self-published author of Unleash, which is um, a sensual poetry book. So it's for the grown folks. Um, I do produce a show called Unleash Your Inhibitions, also for the grown folks. So if you're ever in the Chicagoland area and would like to check us out, then make sure you're grown. <laughs> so um, I'm happy to be here and I'm looking forward to speaking with our panelists here and hopefully you guys um, get a chance to ask some questions as well. That's it. Yeah, so thank you. Um, we're gonna hand it off to the panelists to do a quick intro of themselves. Feel free to give us your name and a little background on you and your intro to house music and, and why nightlife and what, what makes this so important to you. You could start with Amansu maybe. Oh, just yeah. That's fine. I work in education. I'm going to assign you know, roles. I was, I was hoping it was gonna end here, you know. <laughs> uh, my name is Amansu Eason. I'm from Gary, Indiana. Um, I started in dance, I guess I'm a third generation dancer. My father's a musician. I just grew up in a very artistic household um, with my aunties and my grandmother. So we had singers, visual artists, all type of thing, all type of music. Like each woman in my, the house that I was raised in like different genre of music. So I've just always been around a lot of music. Um, I was performing at four years old musical theater, uh, came through Chicago around age seven or eight. I started performing with Elio Children's Dance Theater here. Uh, it's an African performance group. Uh, so I started training in West African performance here in Chicago, and I've been kind of in the scene ever since. Uh, went to a performing arts school, studied ballet, jazz, tap, modern. Um, out of high school, I started to perform with Muntu Dance Theater uh, of Chicago. Went on to become certified in the Catherine Dunham technique um, and kind of have been putting those styles together since I can remember. Um, as Gary, in Gary, I was a battle dancer. I love to dance in a party, so we always kind of try to have our own identity from Chicago because it was such a big city. So we would do a lot of things from Chicago, like footwork, but we would just do it a little differently. Not traditionally, we would add all type of things in there. So when I was young, I would always mix my ballet, my modern, my African into my battles. You would see me doing jumps, turns, flips, slides, all type of stuff within my battle. So I had already started to form this like fusion thing. Um, I honestly did not come into house music until I got much older. Um, the music that I battled with was like either just R&B or just like what I call it Chicago house music, that bass music like, you know, um, cashmere and like that type of, you know, it was popping and footworking and all that stuff. Um, I think house music came when my when I came out of my hyper masculinity uh, in my dance. Like I feel like when I was young, it was just like, ah. Uh, we, we um, it's very similar to B-Boy, the way we would battle with footwork, right? It was very physical, it was very, not just cute. It was very physical, it was very um, 
you were showing off. A lot of times it was gang bangers all up in the parties, you know what I'm saying? So there was this, this type of show of dominance within your dance. Um, dance already had the stigma for men that was, you know, you, you know the whole stigma, it's, it's only for women, you know, you're gay if you dance, you're this, you're that. Um, so we, I, speaking for myself, I felt like I had to be a little bit more hyper-masculine inside of that. So the soft, like house music, I didn't get into that until I started to teach a little bit more. When I was looking for music that was kind of, um, it had a driving beat, but it had versatility to it. Um, then I started to see music, um, I mean movement from house, because growing up, house, house music to me was footwork. It was, it was, that was what we call house music. So I didn't get into house music until I started studying b-boy, breakdancing, and New York styles of dance, where I uh, got introduced to East Coast House. Um, fell in love with it. I was like, oh, this is smooth, this is fire. Um, and then, you know, I feel like I'm getting long-winded, but I, I kind of got introduced to it, I would say, almost in my late teens, early 20s. Uh, fell in love with it, especially like Afro House or Tribal House, because of my West African roots in dance. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how I got into um, house music, as well as, let me, let me um, name drop, um, Ronald K. Brown. I don't know if you all have ever heard of Ron K. Brown and Evidence Dance Group. Um, Afro House, he was the one that kind of really set it to another level because, again, I wasn't just a street dancer, I was also a trained dancer. I was also performing on stage and in the streets. Like I had this dual reality going on as a dancer and performer. So that's kind of how I came into house and it's been a, a beautiful relationship ever since. I guess I'm next. Um, uh, well, uh, my name is Daniel Talbert. Um, I wear many hats, uh, not, I don't have one on today. This is a, uh, this is permanent, it's my antennae, but um, I got introduced to uh, house music as a child. My father was a house DJ. Um, his name was uh, Dan the Music Man. Um, growing up, I was immersed in house music, just check, 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 check your body, you know, every family reunion. And I know that um, when I got in like my late teens, early 20s, I started dancing in a show called I Still Love Her, a tribute to hip hop. And um, my, um, my homeboy, Jeremy, he introduced me to house dance. He was like, yo, all the stuff that you're do we're doing in the club, that's called house dance. I was like, oh, they have a name to it? I thought it was just dancing. <laughs> okay, because like, I grew up immersed in Chicago's dancing because I started off as a foot worker. You know, going to the West Side, uh, Fifth City, uh, the rink on 87th, uh, Route 66 when it was on King Drive, right across the street from what they call Old Block now. So you can kind of get an idea of kind of some of the, you know, energy that I've been around. And footwork, you know, it's like a competitive sport. And when I look at, like, see, footwork and what a lot of people don't know is an evolution of house. Because you got house music at the top, then you got ghetto house, you got ghetto tech, you got juke music, and then you got footwork, which focused on more of the drum beats, the more bass, and moreover, the focus is more on the dancer. It's more on the relationship between the dancer and the DJ. Because as a DJ, if your tracks wasn't hitting, nobody was dancing. Nobody was dancing. So it was, it was a relationship, and that's what it's about. And when I got into house music, house dance, even more, the movement associated with house, it was when I started going to the Shrine on 24th and Wabash. I don't know if anybody remembers that. I'm showing my age. But um, that was my church every Sunday. That was my refuge every Sunday. Me and the speakers. Just me and the speakers. Um, battling all over the city. I have probably checked every dance style out. Like, oh, you do this style of dance? Well, let me battle you. I'm gonna learn your style, then I'm gonna go to this style. It was like very kung fu movie. It was just like, you are a master of this style. I wish to learn it. And that's how we had that conversation. Cause house is a feeling and music helps push the conversation along. You know what I'm saying? It's that, that marriage of movement and, and music. It, it just, it, oh, I'm getting really excited, excuse me. Excuse my passion. My passion, yeah. But, um, but yeah, house music has been always around me. 
glad that it has put such a pen in history in Chicago and the global visibility. It's just been amazing. Yeah. Thank you, Danny. Okay, for me, um, it all started when I was a weird little um, neurodivergent weirdo in the Bay Area of California and going to raves. I was a little raver and I would always gravitate towards the house music rooms in the raves and um, I had a very energetic, aerobic style and sometimes could be perceived as aggressive style of dancing which um, was very cathartic for me and fun and beautiful. Um, and so fate brought me to Chicago where I met some key people in my life that introduced me to a lot of the heads in the house music scene and a lot of the coolest parties and clubs. Um, and eventually, um, oh, I did want to say that my, my style of dancing was very accepted and instead of people making fun of me and mocking me and doing my dance behind my back, people were very accepting and loving and that just really moved me so much. It was, um, oh, I found out that the style of dancing I was doing was called jacking and <laughs> I kind of always naturally did it, but here in Chicago, you know, it was cool and I was, you know, very accepted and that was really beautiful. I was encouraged to participate a little bit more in the house music scene. I, took, I learned how to do video production, taught myself, um, worked with some cool people and did a lot of projects in that, did a lot of videography of events that I went to and aired it on Can TV. Met Jarvis um, and danced on the original version of La Function, which we are now co-producing um, the new version of La Function. So that's my beginning and where I am now and very appreciative to be a part of this. Thank you. I'm Jarvis Mason. Um, house music for me started back in 1985. I was like 15 years old going to the local west side um, parties. One of them places was called The Factory where the music was very more tracks, more jacking. I also went to another party called the Hot Wheels Roller Rink. I went to the firehouse where the, the famous Lit Lewis used to spin, which was only a couple of blocks from, in, from where I lived at. From, from there, house has always been with me. I went off to the Navy in 87, I was still Jack and they gave me a nickname, they called me Disco Duck. <laughs> Cause they didn't, house music really didn't have reached, have reached everybody by 87. It's a new phenomenon now. But back then it was underground. But they considered my style of dance disco. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and then from there I, I came back to Chicago, um, started meeting people, going to clubs, which, which has always, house music has always been the, my soundtrack, even like today, you know. Um, um, when I turned like 30 years old, I started pursuing dance, um, started training. And I've been training for 20 years now. In addition to that, I picked up the love for uh, collecting records. I've been collecting records since 1994. And for me, collecting records, I started to learn how to blend records. So with the music knowledge of what I have and the technical knowledge, I became a DJ. And then from DJing, I became a video producer at Can TV. I had a vision to create a dance show for house, meaning that, okay, yeah, you know we got Soul Train, but with uh, this dance show, my first dance show was called Soul and Ho, which featured Sadar from Soul and Ho. And with this dance show, it's more about a mix. Like, you know, it, you know, Soul Train song play for three minutes, go off. But with house music, we know it's continuous. 
So we decided to come up with a, a production version of a dance show which featured house music. As you see, we have some talent and some history on this stage. <laughs> so um, let's get into it as far as, let's start with the Disco King, Jarvis Mason. <laughs> um, how would you define the nightlife from back in the day to now? How would you define it? For me, for me it, was, it, it, uh, it was younger. <laughs> um, I think it was more exciting for me because I was new to it, you know. And back then, the fashions, the, the dancing, it all shaped who I am today. You know, I wouldn't have no sense of fashion if it wasn't for house music. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what about you, Barbara? How would you define the difference between? And now. Yeah, and okay. I would also love to hear from Barbara Forty and Jarvis too, as like folks who've been on the scene pre, you know, like the Shrine, but also uh, Forty, as you know, like you spoke to some of the older venues that are no longer with us, but definitely held space for us as, as dancers, movers, and shakers. Um, well, when I first got to Chicago, I went to clubs like um, Mad Bar and Red Dog and Green Dolphin, places like that, and um, nobody had cell phones. <laughs> so everybody was just dancing, putting their bag or their whatever like by the speaker and just dancing and like all night long. Um, what's, one thing I notice now is that there's a lot of phones, there's not as much like continuous dancing and there's, um, but it's all still like beautiful and love. Um, there are still like pockets where you can dance, but I just know that back then it was like all dance. Everybody was sweating, and um, it's very cathartic, and it can still be that way today, but sometimes it's, it's hard to run into. <laughs> it's a big difference from like back then, it's like just being in the moment, so no cell phones to disturb you, distract you, especially if someone have a flashing light. <laughs> so it's almost like you're on that spotlight. So how would you describe it? I'm sorry, I'm having a flashback right now, okay? I'm Tell the story, Forty. Tell the story. a flashback of when um, I was at the Shrine. Okay, and I'm going to give y'all just, this was a di very difficult point in my life. I was like literally living outside, bouncing from couch to couch. Papa was a Rolling Stone, but I ain't got no kids. You feel me? Now, my homeboy was like, yo, you got to cheer up, man. We going to the Shrine. And it was diaspora night. And it was people from the Caribbean, people from West Africa, South Africa, North Africa, Guyana, um, the, 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 you know, the Caribbean, all over, like the, 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 the black population of Mexico, the black population of Colombia, you know, the ones they don't tell you actually live there. Like it's, they all were there at once. It was the human diaspora there. And everybody was in this motion. It was a flowing motion. Nobody had their phone out because there was no space because it was all for participation, not speculation. And that's how we all, you know, participated in creation. That, that's what was happening. That's, the, that's what I remember from the scene back in, you know, my late teens and 20s, because I've been going to, you know, clubs since I was have to say about 15. You know, underground stuff, like going to the rink on 87 if they had the footwork in, being on the battle scene. Now it's more speculative. Everybody's like waiting on that one person, like, hey, you're the one in the crew that dances, do the thing. You know, look, do the thing. Hey, that person does the thing. And then everybody watches. But like, you know, house is a field and music is conversation. Let's talk, you know, let's mix it up. But yeah, that, that's, that's the difference I noticed. All right, so again, um, I'm from Gary, Indiana, so I was also in the clubs very young. You know, we would perform, kind of, we would basically keep the party type and they would let us in for free, um, whatever. That's neither here nor there. Um, so 
my Chicago experience with dance, I, I came through the African community in dance. Um, so it started off very culturally, like we would have like bantabas or things like that. Um, and then we kind of, as we grew up, then we went to spaces like the Wild Hair and um, the shrine was the shrine was the spot, y'all. If y'all missed out on the shrine, like if you know anything about Fela Kuti, they try to bring that experience right here to um, Chicago. It was the spot. Um, and what I would say is what I've noticed in my short time um, is that I feel like the party used to be a little bit more, if you, if I will, for lack of better terms, one dimensional as far as the music style. Yeah. Um, I think it's a lot more open to everybody's culture, a lot of different cultures mixed into whatever. So I think the music has evolved because artists are just, it's easier for artists to come out from different places now. You don't have to be scared to be African or Caribbean or wherever you're from. Music is music. If it makes you move, we move into it. And DJs are so skilled now that they can make, they can mix anything with anything. I think, I was thinking about this earlier, like I feel like DJs are responsible for the proper remixes. You know what I mean? Like a proper mix is a, it, you know. Yes, anyway. I know what you mean. So, um, yeah, that, that was my experience. I feel like it's, it's definitely blossomed into this beautiful thing where it's like they used to only have diasporic nights. You yeah. know, now it's like we have all clubs that have Caribbean nights and that encompasses Afro and Caribbean and soca and dance hall. Like it's, it's a thing now, you know, so that, that would be an evolution that I've seen um, as a dancer. Nice. Thank you all for sharing that. I think it's very special to be able to talk about like the evolution and, and where it comes from and where it's going. Um, and to that end, I guess I'm kind of curious from Jarvis um, and maybe even Barbara, um, can you talk about like disco as a definition and like what makes Chicago a unique place for something like disco and Jack and that form of dance and even that sound? like. What makes it so special? And is there a difference between the two? And, you know, what does La Function have to say and respond to? <laughs> we got questions. We got questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, growing up, you had tracks, which was considered house music. But the disco was considered deep house. Before they come out with this, this, this soulful genre, it was Deep House, where Deep House, you had to go to the old record stores to find this music that they was playing. It wasn't like, like the current uh, dance music, which you can find probably at any popular record store. And now when it comes to disco, well, when disco was at its height, I was probably eight or nine years old at the time. You know, so I didn't really get the party to it. But a lot of people who watched me dance, who was at the warehouse, they, they asked me if I was at the warehouse. No, I was too young. <laughs> but I'm a portal of the warehouse, though. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll speak on that a little bit. Um, my first introduction to Deep House and Disco in Chicago. When I grew up, I liked disco music, like pop disco music, like, you know, when I was a kid. Um, but when I was introduced to Deep House and disco music with Sada and at places like Slicks for Hole in, Soul in the Hole, it was just way deeper, way cooler. And the music is what inspires the dance. So I, I took some modern dance in college and just seeing also like the amazing dancers around me, like inspired by the disco music, it just made me pull from that modern dance and it's just so such a beautiful sound that it inspires your movement and it just creates amazing dancers I feel like anybody else want to touch on that at all yeah just like the the essence of disco and something like Jack and how it's defined in a city like Chicago and why Chicago makes it so special well, I know Chicago is like, we have, it's a lot of communal type of dances, right? So I feel like jacking is a vibe, it's a groove, you know what I'm saying? It's a, it's a way of people to figure out what the vibe is, what the, the, the music is doing. So I think it has that communal thing that, at least for me growing up in the Chicago area, 
I've always been a part, like I said, I keep going back to this African community, this sense of community. We will always come and dance together. There will always be a dance that everybody did together. Yeah. So whatever it was, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like the Jack, that, that little groove is something that it's not too hard, it's not too simple. Like there's so many ways you can, you know, take your Jack however you want it, but it was simple enough where you can have this thing that we all are vibing to and get this, because we all know that these dance forms can be higher than just in the club. It can be taken to another level when it's done together. You know, so it's like now we have this thing that we can do together and raise the vibration, raise this energy. So I like the jack like that. Disco for me, I always like to watch the pageantry of it. Like the, you know, the, the outfits that people would come with and the way that they would frame their bodies. Like I feel like it was a nice mix between street and like maybe a competition ballroom type of a situation. So I, that, that's what I liked about disco. I never got to do it in the club though. Yeah, I was born in 89, so I, I learned how to spell disco, but never really got a chance to dance in the, the spaces they did disco. I know, like, Deep House, I'm learning, like, because even though, you know, I'm only 34, like, I grew up in house music, so I didn't know these distinctive terms, like, <laughs> Deep House, Soulful House electronic dance music. And I was like, wait, but it's made with electronic. That's also electronic dance music. But, you know, I've just learned that like, like with, with disco and house and all that, it, it's all about the community. It's all about like doing a dance that everybody can do so we can all participate. And you know, after like a couple of eight counts, people start branching off and start doing their own little vibe. And people who do hand stuff go over there. People who like to jump around go over there. People who like to be on the floor go over there. And, and it just works itself out. Oh, you are also in my ballroom class? All right, let's do the thing we did in ballroom class to this music. And then it just became a that. You know what I'm saying? Shut, close. Dance, community, house. <laughs> okay, yeah. right on. Put right that on, on a t-shirt. <laughs> As a dancer myself, I totally get what you're saying, Forty, because when I first started out going into the clubs like Red Dog for house music, there was people doing the hustle or their break dance, and so you have the B-boys and the B-girls doing their thing, and then you have somebody just doing something that looks like Tai Chi or some Capoeira. It's like it was so many different styles happening. It's like there's no right or wrong way to do house. I mean, the only way you do it wrong is if you're just standing in the middle of the dance floor and standing and standing. <laughs> So it, it is, and then disco is a fashion. It's like watching the videos, like old YouTube clips of disco and uh, the clothes they wear, like they took pride, they took time to look good because it was all about presenting yourself to the world and it was all about the culture. Do it for the culture. <laughs> so um, go, speaking of movement, so what are some of the movements that you can describe or display <laughs> from then or now when it comes to house dancing? And I'm also wanting to tap into to some of the Afro styles of house dance mm -hmm. or Afro styles of dance. Um, I think a lot about how dance music is not resurfacing, but being presented in this way now, especially from like the Afro beat, Afro house, um, lens and forefront where the motion is very similar to a lot of what we see hyper locally and so would love to hear just you all's take and thoughts on the intersections and the you know the way that those dance moves have progressed and shown up okay okay um jumping sure um so we know that things resurface every like what 10 20 years dance moves they always come back. Um, I think what's again happening is just there's this acceptance now. So we're starting to see movements that we've been seeing, but now we're just showing them again in a more um, respected space. So they're starting to resurface. Um, I think the music is just starting to blend together and almost become one like sound. You know what I'm saying? Well, let me not say that. That's, that's definitely not but it's starting to be influenced like where it was like 
all right, back in the day, if this is African music, we can't have this electronic um, device. It has to be drums. There has to be, you know, this traditional, like, I think there's this acceptance of all cultures that are influencing and informing each other um, that I like to see. Same thing with the movement. Uh, we know, like, within hip-hop and within house, the, the communities inform the movement. So we have this blend, like, for, for instance, in Chicago. We have Latin communities, we have Asian communities, we have black communities, African communities. Those people show up in a club and we educate each other on each other and I take, oh, I like that, let me add that to my, especially if you're a battle dancer. Mm -hmm. You cannot be one dimensional, you need to be taken, uh, let me, all right, and then I'm gonna flip it on you. Then I'm gonna do that, and then what can I get? And then over here, and then I'm over here. So I think all of these movements are just resurfacing, um, put a little bit of, you know, extra garlic on it or a little bit of extra pepper on it and it's something different, you know. I'm going to talk, I'm not going to do yeah, it. That, that surely spices it up. I'm, I'm with you. Um, I, I, when I look at, like, some of the, uh, the shifts in, like, the dance, the movement, I'm noticing that, like, it's not that those, like, those things are resurfacing. They've always been there. It's just now we're now in those spaces to share. And plus with the like advent of like TikTok and other social media, now somebody from South Africa can learn how to dance from somebody in Nigeria. Somebody in Nigeria could take a class in India, teach it to somebody from Chicago. Like, I don't know if you've always see, seen this dance that they're like, wah, wah, boom, boom, wah, wah, boom, boom. That's from footworking. Like this group called Creation Footwork Kings, they would do that as a celebratory dance to kind of synchronize with each other. And I've seen that in like Sturdy, the, the style called Sturdy, like a lot of like Sturdy moves look like footwork in, which look like tap, you know what I'm saying? It's like it's those amalgam styles, they're all blending together because it's all part of the same conversation. It's just finding a fun way to walk. It's finding a fun way to walk. You know, make it interesting, make it fun. Get where you're going in style, you know? So it's just seeing it how like, those people have all walked to the same clubs together and just <laughs> married those together. And then you got I'm a Piano, which is like house music, but like the, the bass is in the percussion part. So it's like normally where you would have your hi-hats with that you hearing doom, 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 doom. And you give like, and it gives you the space to improv and had facial expressions and you know, oh, I'm getting excited again because like me and Ray is like cut on the music right now. <laughs> yeah, and I was gonna pick it back on the I'm a piano yeah. style like yeah. that I noticed that was similar to what I saw in, um, in house was like this up being on the up yeah. right. Yep. So it's like you know they got the taps in the house right. Mm -hmm. Same thing as that I'm a piano like it's on the up it's on the up right. It's up thing right. It's up. Yeah, it's on the up beat. If you stick around for the DJ set afterwards, I'm sure you'll see some demonstrations of what we mean by up. Wow, word. Would anybody else like to speak on that at all before we? Wait, what'd you say? If anybody else had anything to say or demonstrate before like demonstrate. we Demonstrate. Move on. So what you we talking was, about? We were talking about the jack, right? We were talking about the jack. So sit. Uh. Hey. Decent Jack? Yeah, it's a, it's a decent. All right, cool. Decent Jack. So we're here, right? Let's see some mode of communication. Let's say an Afro, an Afro, like I'll say, like in Ghanaian dance, in Ghanaian, like Ghana popper, it's an emphasis in the chest, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh. 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 Yeah, so it's, it's a little, little, little things. It's about, again, I think all black dance across the board, it's about the groove which informs the next thing. So I think all of those things, it's that African aesthetic that's passed through these, these forms all the way through. The circles, the ciphers, the how the only thing is wrong is to sit and watch because we're not entertaining you. We're, it's a participatory, right. participatory thing. It's a ritual. It's a ritual. It's higher than just, I'm doing this so you can think I'm tight. I'm doing right. this to heal myself, to heal the community, to be together, to, to feed, to empower, to, you know, do all of these things as much. We need to, all right, I don't want to get ahead of myself. But, <laughs> I, you know, I'm feeling, I'm feeling you know your passion. I'm, I'm feeling There's, feeling there's you, this bro. power that people that only observe will never know. Mm -hmm. Like, see, like, when you say that, it reminds me of that, 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 um, that, that uh, proverb, I am because we are. 
that you're of a proverb that I am because we are and when we come into that space together it's like there's another there's another um phrase I remember is that if you can talk you can sing if you walk if you can walk you can dance so if you felt like you were awkward you felt like oh I can't dance that I can't do yes you can just start dancing just walk your way and eventually you'll get on the two and four or the one and three but you just here with us you know that I'm just, just, just mm-hmm. I get really Thank excited you. Um, this one is not on the list, but I've been like hearing you all kind of touch back to dancers that were in the room with you, and I wonder if now is just a good time to like say some of those names into the space of people who shared the floor with you, who brought you into the dance, who showed you the music, showed you the club. Are there names that you just kind of want to like say into the space to DJ, bring a little gratitude? DJ Terry Hunter. I remember my friend, uh, Jared Brown, he said, bro, my uncle is DJing at the Shrine. I'm like, who your uncle? Terry Hunter. Terry Hunter's who? DJ Terry Hunter. Almost ran to the Shrine all the way from 87. Like, I swear, because I couldn't wait to go. Uh, let's see, what the DJ, well, of course my daddy Dan the music man. Um, Jeremy Noah. One of my best friends um, brought me to, into it. I, um, Brooklyn Terry from New York, very famous house dancer. Very famous house dancer. See, I've been in a room with Brian Green, famous house dancer. Um, let's see, let's see. Jarvis, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Jarvis a legend, okay, y'all. Uh, Jarvis is a legend, okay? He's been around for a minute, okay? He's influenced a lot of people. Um, I'm just going to stop right there. I would say Sada is my favorite DJ. Always has been. I haven't heard him play in a long time because he's abroad a lot of the time. And I haven't been getting out much these last couple years. But um, a lot of the DJs were inspiration to me. Um, Let's see. Like Gene Hunt. Um... I don't know, my mind is blanking, but a, a lot of the DJs. <laughs> and Jarvis. <laughs> uh, um, real quick, just to represent for the f- footwork community, uh, rest in peace, DJ Rashad. Um, you know, ghetto text, you already know. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see, there's uh, DJ Spin. Rest in peace, DJ Dion. Rest in peace, DJ Dion. Rest in peace, DJ Dion. Uh, Sluggo, Gant Man, RP Boo, Record Player Boo. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I had to, you know, throw in represent for the for the squad. Anybody else? Jarvis, Erica. Oh, wait, as far as DJs? Just anybody who has influenced your practice and influenced oh, how oh. you show up. Oh, as definitely. An Sada, um, DJ Rohan, Mark Hussein, Jamie Three Twenty Six. <laughs> Well, Kari <laughs> I'm a late bloomer to house music. I I think so because I was into rap. <laughs> so. I, rem- I remember you at um, Red Dog. I was at Red Dog. <laughs> so late. So, but that's considered late to a lot of folks who. Not really. You right on time. I was not. I'm right, well, I'm right on time. People didn't okay. have phones then standing around. Okay, <laughs> so then then the timeline is I'm I'm on time. So, uh, but uh, back then, I would be uh, DJ Lil John, Gene Hunt, um, DJ Emmanuel, um, who else? Um, as far as dance goes, I would say um, Boogie McLaren. Um, she has been a true inspiration to the house community and just to the dance community overall. Um, those, those, are, those are my um, pinpoints. Thanks, y'all. I just felt moved to hear because a lot of you have been speaking about the people in the rooms with you, and so I just wanted to hear who some of those folks were. What about you, Ray? Oh, wow. Um, You know, Dwayne Powell and Sean Alvarez pretty much raised me as a DJ, and I'm so grateful to them always. Um, Danny was in rooms with me when, when we were younger, 10 years ago, learning to dance and be on stage together. Um... 
You know, yeah, man, a lot of people, Terry Hunter especially, uh, DJ Lady D, um, all of the ladies of the DJ scene have really, really blessed me. And whether it's been in real time or from a distance and they don't even know it, I speak their names, I, I speak of their existence early and often. Um, yeah, those are my folks. And of course, all the people that I've shared a dance floor with and the people that have danced to my music and my blends and my mixes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. um, so, oh, wait, I'm gonna listen to some tracks. So, as far as um, important tracks of vocalists and DJs, we, we talked about that. Um, do we have time to play some tracks? Do we have some tracks about? that we could like listen to some snippets and talk about? Too far DJ gone. Joe Depressor, no everybody. Shout out to G DJ Joe Depressor of the Honey Pot Performance Collective. So. so, yeah, some important tracks and vocalists and DJs that we've mentioned in the past. Um, is there a shout out of anyone else? You good. What, what are you talking about, like songs? Mm hmm tracks, yep. Let's see, Let, Mo Let No Man, Put Asunder, uh, Too Far Gone, Ain't No Way Back. Uh, ooh, oh, I need. Brighter Days. Brighter Days. Brighter days. Um, what's another one I know? I beat that, put it back. Put <laughs> <laughs> it back. Uh, not that one. That's a little violent. Um, a little graphic. Um, percolator, got to be. Time for the Percolator. percolator. Mm-hmm. We just talk about influential music. We just talk about influential Juke music. Slide. Right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Juke Slide, the Cha-Cha Slide. Because they used to play that and at the parties. Jarvis, did you send some stuff for the workshop? Uh, yes, I, uh, I sent him, it's, it's called Acid Interjection. Uh -huh. It's a track that came out on the Chicago dance label, Jerkin' Jerks, and Yes. And whenever this song is still played today, it would definitely get people to jack it. Mm -hmm. No matter how old or how bad your knees hurt. <laughs> All right, now Jarvis I, said it, so y'all got to do it. I dare you to jack. I dare you. <laughs> well, we won't, we, we're not going to act like we're going to get into the workshop, but we do just want to collectively listen to the song a little bit. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Hey, fun fact: that track thing is footwork. Footwork DJs sample house tracks, speed them up, and turn them into footwork tracks. I have heard that track as a footwork track. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I think we have we have quite a bit more time. Um, should we talk to Jarvis a little bit more about La Function? Talk and to me. <laughs> yeah, tell us about La you know. Function. Uh, what is La Function? I would love to learn more. La Function is the party portal to the disco underground. If you haven't been there, you can come with us now <laughs> by subscribing <laughs> and liking on my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. So, in comparison to like the dance show um, that you had on Can TV, like. What, is there a difference? Is there a different vibe? Is the timing of it different? Like, what does it sound like? Who are your dancers? Yeah. Who is your audience? <laughs> All of that. My audience is anyone who enjoy dance music. It's open to everybody. Um, as far as the music is still underground disco, deep disco. The only d difference I would have to say is uh, we have a DJ on the set, whereas the pilot episode don't have a DJ on the set. Uh, we still have a host, and we have a special guest performance, which usually a uh, local Chicago act. I'm promoting Chicago acts on this show. And our first guest would be Port Laureate Avery R. Young. Woo! Young, make, <laughs> make some noise for Avery R. Young. He can sing. 
Like very so well. So be sure to subscribe to be notified when the show come out. Beautiful. Le Function. Le Function. L E F U N. Um, the dancers. Uh, Eric is one of my dancers. <laughs> um, Danny Forty and Barbara. She could be a dancer. She was one of my dancers. She's my original dancer from the pilot. You can check her out on the the Function pilot on YouTube. I was. And I'm also, um, the function is a cast of dancers where I'm showcasing the, the dancers that's participating. So are you looking for dancers at this time? Of course. <laughs> Join us. Join us. Join us. Especially one male of dancers. Us. One that's of us. <laughs> I would like to just add something different from the original and now is that um, we're actually producing the show in what feels like to me a real underground port or an underground space that you take a portal to. Um, originally we were doing it at the Can TV studios where there's very limited time and resources and um, but now we have our own space to do it and it's just wonderful to be able to do that and um, there's different very scheduled aspects of the show like 15 segment 15 minute segments where the dancer stands there's a circle of love which is kind of like a dance circle where all kinds of dance can be displayed in the middle and like Jarvis said the special guest and um, yeah it's just to me it's amazing Beautiful. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing the La Function function. Yes. Okay. It, it, it's um, one a blast. thing I would like to add, since I, it's a blast. The, the original uh, pilot episode was shot 18 years ago, and I thought this idea was long abandoned because I was hoping somebody would see it and pay me to do more. It didn't happen like that. I think the Lord wanted it to happen like it's happening now. And um, our first shoot was done in March, and it was the best shoot I ever had in my life. So I'm looking forward to shooting, doing more. Beautiful. Well, y'all pull up on the function. Um, and before we get into, we have a little bit of time, we wanna get into some audience questions, but before we go there, um, I think we can round out with a question to the panel about um, maybe like what's next? What do you think is next for your, your, your sort of dance floor, your space, your atmosphere, and also um, if you can talk a little bit about the importance of preserving uh, the, the history of, of what the work that you've been doing and also um, just thinking through, again, yeah, what's next, even in that preservation? Well, I, I look at the function as planting a seed for uh, future dancers to be inspired. I mean, it ain't every day like when you're young, you're going to be, say, if you're a 15-year-old. They don't make parties for 15-year-olds like they did back in the day. We got exposed to house music or social dance early, where nobody wasn't getting shot or killed, you know. Everybody lived. Everybody lived. We, we were in the family reunion era. Yeah. People came together to dance. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but um, did you want to? Oh, oh, no. right. oh, this is the flow, 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 flow. flow. All right, well. I think it's very important to um, preserve the power of dance and the power of coming together. And a lot of people that have taken class with me, I always teach the power of dance. Like a lot of times we get caught up with things like TikTok and Instagram where you're learning dance on the weakest surface, meaning you're just doing it for like reciprocal gain. So somebody can like you. Dance and the arts in general can be used on so many different levels of healing, um, escapism, whatever you need to do, changing your emotions, all of these things. I think we need to get back to educating on the power, the power of dance. Um, I think that club dance gets a, a bad rep because people only focus on the sexualization of it. Um, although there's a whole sexual aspect to being a human, that needs to be also taught properly. Um, so just being educated as a dancer, educating young dancers, um, 
and knowing the history of it because it doesn't it didn't start in the club it started way back with our ancestors uh when they were using movement to communicate things to to do things um before we had this collective tongue or whatever um so if there's anything i can continue to do is i'm going to continue to educate what the arts are outside of just something that is a hobby um it is a way of life art is a part of our life it's everywhere it is us so it needs to be accepted and taught like that preserving black social dance is important and we wanted to have joe depressor is there some uh digital artifacts that's been some oh we don't oh disregard <laughs> okay well it is Psych. important to preserve black social dance and um, does anyone want to add on the importance of preserving the artifacts that um, we have here today and and into the future I would mention that um, I was really inspired when Jarvis asked me to um, do this do the show with him because he wanted to inspire young people and to have their own parties and learn from the show about the vibe of inclusion and love and safe spaces to party and be yourself and be free and um, where everybody, whether you're gay, straight, you know, any backgrounds can come together and, and party in peace. Um, and one thing I was thinking for the future is that like inspiring other young people to have parties and have a different view of disco in some of the research i did i found out like on TikTok, like what is under disco and it's like all pop disco so it's really cool for them to learn about you know deeper disco and deep house and also i could see us doing Le, maybe possibly la function events where that can also happen but um, the main thing is passing it down to young people. Yeah. Okay. Real quick, does anyone have any questions for the panelists? Hi, can you hear me? Not at all. She can't hear me. Can you hear me now? I can hear me now. Um, hi, my name is Aria, child of the underground, came from it, also a portal, I like the way that you talk about portal, my parents are throwing massive rave parties that I didn't go to, but it's my culture. I'm curious what Barbara is talking about, aside from La Function, where are we doing that now, right? Like where, where are you, where are you picking up on the vibe that the shrine left off, right? Because that energy doesn't leave. It's still here. So where is that energy circulating in the city where you're going somewhere and you're like, yeah, this is like that. Does it exist? Did it evaporate? Are you recreating it still? Thanks. That's the question. Well, I think it's up to us to, to create another space like that. Because yeah. it happened, it happened, like the shrine had a purpose for being there. But the people that came made the memories of what people remember the shrine to be. Um, I was just sitting here, you know, sorry, like starting to answer your question as you were asking it. And I was uh, saying like, maybe baseline is starting to get there where they have these cultural mashups and there's these special things that happen uh, collectively. There's the um, call and response culture from the DJ, the dance hall being brought in, the um, follow the leader, the, 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 the dances that we do together. But um, we do live in a, I, I hate to put it like this, but we do live in a, a slightly less sensitive time. Um, like they said, we used to come literally to dance. I didn't come to be cute. I came to sweat it out, to get whatever I was going through out. Um, I said something about people focusing on the sexualization of stuff in the club. I would get my sexual shit out. I would get my fighting stuff out. I would get my emotional stuff out. Like I would get it out, I would leave it there and I would leave light. So it's like bringing those aspects back to spaces um, more regularly. Um, and I guess being intentional about 
how you come together. See, you can't catch a vibe from a robot. You can't catch a vibe from an AI. You know, because the way that things are going now, they can just record a bunch of people doing communal dances, post it up on a screen and say you're at a party. Mm -hmm. So what it takes to kind of combat that attitude is kind of reawaken the communal aspect of dance. Knowing that you have to go outside and you have to dance with somebody else. You know, I remember the, the dance by myself. I could do it by myself. I could do it by myself. And it's like, yeah, that's very individualistic, but doesn't it get like boring? after a while you know so it's like you know since the motto my motto is it's not ego it's we go so when we go to a party we're gonna have a good time together are those parties like what parties are you, where are you going where are you dancing what's cool right now to you what feels like it used to i tell you i throw a damn good dance party yeah. it's called party noir yep, I like that. I um we have a seasonal run at the story um, there's this DJ named Bonita Appleblunt who throws a party <laughs> called Motherland that happens on for Thursdays at Smart Bar. Um, there are so many I'm a piano centric parties around the city that the DJ after this, DJ Diaspora, spins at. Um, there's a uh, Hour Nine, which is a, a younger house-centric group of DJs, Hour Nine. Um, and those are some of the spaces that come off the top of head right now that you can like physically go to um, and be in a space that I think is rooted not only in the music and, and the dance, but also rooted in a form of care in nightlife that you, know, you don't see very often. Um, and so those spaces, those, those particular nights and parties that I just named feel very much like come for the dance. If you wanna come for a look too, trust me, that is there as well. Um, but you can certainly go solely for the dance to those events and spaces that I just named. I like that word care that you put in there. Like that, that's that's a big part. Like we actually genuinely were happy to see dance. We were happy to battle. Like we actually had those type of video rivalries, you know what I'm saying? And it was all love, you know? Couldn't wait to see you and battle you. See you at the beginning of the party. All right, when, the, when the song come on, all right, I'll see you on the, at I'll you. See, you know? When that song come on, right Maybe there. by the speakers. You know what I'm saying? So, Outside of Fulbright State, be like, hey, me and you by the speakers. Let's get it. <laughs> so, Okay. Uh, so speaking of spaces and kind of what's on the scene right now, I'm sitting next to Kahari B. That I'm going to <laughs> put the you legend. on the spot, and maybe Erica can speak to this too, of some of the other kind of alternative spaces where nightlife is happening now. You want to talk about your own part? Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> you want me to talk, talk about it for you, brother? But mm -mm. I think you want to talk about um, it. It's, I remember like, in my in the early days once you went to one party it kind of plugged you into all the other ones because you end up just meeting people standing around after the party um after the party and talking about what's the next party and i believe it's still like that um in a, in a way you know people don't take smoke breaks anymore but all the weed heads get together in the back you know um I'm trying to think what hops weekly. Because they were talking about the past, I'm stuck in the past. Because I'm thinking like chicken wings, uh, which was the Red Pepper Lounge on 87. It's, those were like genre or cultural shaping joints. Um, but now, and I'm going, I'm going blank like Barbara, like what, go, where do I go? You, you did, you totally did. I, I just came to be a spectator. Uh, 31st Street is really big on Thursdays, Wednesdays? Thursday nights. Is that Wednesdays? Thursdays. Thursdays, Thursdays. Um, and it's funny because 80% of the crowd has no interest in house. House just like drew all of these hundreds of people to that one spot. So a lot of promoters show up there and promote uh, promote what they have coming up. So that's, that's, that's one of those things and it's, Summertime Chicago. There's nothing like summertime Chicago. It's outside, so there's that. And it's free. People love free. 
Uh, <laughs> It's, it's funny you all talking about the shrine, and I remember how everybody hated the shrine until the shrine closed. <laughs> Sunday service with uh, Sunday Dwayne service. Powell, and this coming Sunday with Celeste Alexander. It's one of the best sets going, and I say that because it's one of the few sets that it's an all-age thing. So you, yeah. while well, you all were talking about passing it down, it allows, it's like little teeny people there in the way and <laughs> uh you know it's it's the babies and the teenagers and 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 the, and the elders everybody is like there so that happens the third third sun sundays fourth sunday third sundays at the stony island arts bank yeah yeah so it's coming up this sunday and um it's always a great party celeste and uh, celeste is spending this week at the it's in the kimwood garden it's usually at the uh stony island arts bank but they moved outside because down uh summertime chicago so they're outside in kimwood gardens and that's all i can think of off the top of my head but it's like a party damn near every day yeah if you all were ever in traffic on stony island it's like what's that music going on over there just go over there and check it out just go yeah i, I was i was out on sunday a couple of sundays ago and got detoured around because they were still breaking down everything from the house picnic and I, me and a friend just heard the boom, 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 boom. What is that? And it was just a bunch of people called Good Vibes had an outdoor thing going on right on, I think that was about 659th? 63rd. 63rd in Stony. It was great. <laughs> we just pulled over and we walked on, walked on into, walked on into the, to the, to, to the scene. And it was, it was actually really, really cool. Thank you. Um, okay. Hi. Um, I never mind. I'm not going to tell y'all who I am. It doesn't matter. I just have a question. Um, <laughs> I, I think a lot of times people love talking about passing things on to the youth, but I wonder, like, where can we, like, where do we start meeting them where they're at? Because I think like the internet, TikTok, maybe even IG are great avenues for people to like discover new music or maybe even rediscover music that's already like culturally relevant. If, um, that was weird. Um, but yeah, I just don't want to discount technology as like this thing that's just a big distraction. Because like for me, at least as a DJ, occasionally like I've met a lot of really great people over the internet and a lot of people who I can relate to that I would not have met otherwise because I can't travel right now. Um, don't have the funds, uh, maybe one day. But I just wonder like when, when do we start meet, like where can we start meeting youth, specifically teenagers where they are? Because like in the city, what is there for them to do? Like everybody just wants to arrest and throw teens in jail because they're downtown but it's like what do we what do we do like how do we like meet the youth where they are without like being like y'all are on tiktok too much you know yeah i don't know what you would suggest i feel like and this is i mean just to like call mca into the space even a little bit more mca does a teen night i think it's called like exuberance or something like that, if you know, you know. Um, but I feel like institutions such as Chicago Park District, such as Museum of Contemporary Art, such as School of the Art Institute, or you know, the Art Institute, which is actually who does exuberance, my bad, MCA. I know y'all do teen stuff and I know it's not exuberance, my bad. But they, MCA also does very teen-centered programming and I just wonder what it looks like for these organizations and institutions to throw like big bashes in these parts of the city that teens already like to be in and so you bring in the DJs that they like and you bring in the sounds that they like and you just kind of throw this big free party on the terrace of MCA. You know what I'm saying? And boom. That's the, you can meet them where they're at. You can get your MCA team programmers to create a TikTok for this night, you know, and create a playlist. Don't mind me, I'm just giving y'all some programming ideas. Free game. Uh, <laughs> 
But I think that, you know, our cultural institutions have the means. And so while there are things happening like schools closing down, students don't have any, students and young folks don't have anything to do with their time, these cultural institutions need to step up because they are the ones with the resources. That's my opinion. Does anyone uh, else have any questions? Yeah. Uh, can, I, can I address the, the question? So um, I agree, like I'm not saying that the internet is a bad thing if used wisely. So again, it's about educating yourself on how you can use the internet to learn something or to enhance what you're doing. It's about getting into those spaces that they named, seeing what it was so that you can change the culture. There's keepers of culture, there's creators of culture, but it all has to be like respectful. It has to be no judgment. It's just a truth telling, a, a real thing. Um, knowing what the television and all the d these devices that they're using are doing and can do um, the flip side is there's an absolute endless amount of knowledge that you can get. How are you using your time? How are you doing this? Is there care there? Is there a human aspect there? Is there, what are you doing with the time? So uh, I'm always, because I work with kids, I've been working with kids since I was a kid. Um, I'm never like, your music's trash. Like I grew up with, with all of my elders talking about your music is trash. Okay, it might be, whatever. Um, but you have to understand the language. Like, we speak languages, we create languages, learn what their language is, how to talk to them, how to get to them, how to, again, educate and inform, suggest, let them make their own decisions, but give them the information um, that they might be missing. Um, caring is observing, seeing what's needed, how they're using things, and then enhancing. So I, I, I'm all about absolutely meeting them, but also being honest. And, and if there's something that I can give and share from my experiences, I'm gonna do that. Great, thank you for the response. Does somebody else wanna add to it? I was just gonna add okay. one thing. Okay, okay, I see Barbara's gonna add. I'm gonna stack your question and then I saw a person over here with their hand up, we'll stack. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I'll be really quick. Um, I think it's up to the older people to include like younger artists like I do see Annabelle like a really old school like awesome DJ along with Ray Chardonnay who like brings in a younger crowd and like just bringing those two together I think is really important and using the internet um, not to just bring the focus back on lay function but that's one of the purposes of La function is that people can be at a 55 minute party without having to leave their house they see young people dancing to it, they see older people dancing to it, they see a multi-generational thing, and I think that that's another way to bring in young people and people who can't travel around. Yeah, generativity is very important, getting like multiple generations in one particular space and just sharing like language from the past and then language from the present, like blending that together, that's really gonna help with these young people because like I work with young people in the streets but more on the street level like I actually like walk down the street walk to them on the corner and ask them what's going on with them uh, and what a lot of them are looking for is a safe space to express themselves and also where they can feel like they can perform without the idea of speculation like they're being watched because like there was a sound like like uh, dance like no one's watching but in this hyper, in a world of hyper visibility, there's always someone watching somewhere. And I don't mean to pull out my psychic, but you know when um, when you're being observed, you behave differently. When you are aware that you are being observed, you kind of hold back a little bit. You don't really fully express yourself. So I know like a lot of the young people now really struggle with that of authentically expressing themselves because essentially they're always on. Um, hello, I have more of a comment versus a uh, question. And that is, uh, first of all, thank you. Thank you uh, for carrying this torch of, of dance culture in, in Chicago. Uh, it is Chicago. I, I live in LA now, and I, I've been there for some time. And prior to that, I was in New York. But 
Um, Chicago's unique. Chicago is special. Even this space was uh, imperative to dance culture in Chicago. I used to come in when I was a kid to Jack and Jill parties and we would turn it into b-boy battles. So that said, this, this place is special and, and the youth, to, to your um, point sister, you y'all have to carry that torch as well, but you need to have a desire to want to carry that torch and, and make it your own, even if it is on TikTok. It's, it's, it's just a desire, a desire to perpetuate this, this, this art form that we have within us, within this entire diaspora. Um, I've bared witness to it in Nigeria, in, in Salvador Bahia, and also in various islands in the Caribbean. We're all interconnected and we all express ourselves through this um, expression. So again, um, thank you, and, and we gotta carry the Chicago tour, y'all. Thank you. Right, thank you. I think we have one more question over here. Okay, and then I think we might have to wrap this up. Gentleman in the back has oh, okay, two more questions. Um, I just have a question. I think at one point, um, Disco had gotten to a point where it was like a political movement. It had gotten so much influence that they shut it down. And I'm wondering if you think House has had a instance in history with that, or do you think there's a possibility that House could um, transform into something past uh, an escape, past entertainment? Um, yeah. Well, from, from what I've seen is that like disco, like I don't know if you all remember seeing that video footage of like the day disco died. Yeah. And they burned, they said F disco, and they burned a sign to disco and everything. And that is because of like the uh, anti LGBTQ sentiment yeah. um, that was prevalent at the time. Um, some of it is still a little bit like a lot, pre well, let's say it's still prevalent um, in some of the spaces, especially like in the footwork community. We're having that conversation now because that is how a lot of those movements, a lot of the love collective dance movements were kind of shut down was that anti-LGBTQ you know just that whole sentiment and that's what that's what divided everything and that's what disempowered house and disempowered disco but now with the like with just everyone just accepting people being people celebrating life we're going to start to see more of this type of music start to pop up. We're, I'm seeing disco songs pop up again. I'm seeing remixes. Folks are sampling the disco songs and turning them into some new songs. So it's the research of love is happening. Love is coming back. I think love is coming back. Uh, thank you all for the conversation. This, this will be quick, I promise. Um, but just getting back to what's happening now. Uh, I just want to ask, you know, next weekend is the Silver Room Block Party. Is there anybody there that you think is worth getting out of the house for? Yeah. <laughs> I would say everybody at the Silver Room Block Party is amazing and you can't go wrong. Check out Jim Garchi Capoeira. Plug, plug. They'll be at the Silver Room I mean, Block Party. Um, we're all pretty interesting people, so if you want to come just to be around some interesting people, I also recognize your hat, and you have a friend with you. So I recognize faces, especially ones that are smiling. So there you go. See, I reckon I'm going to recognize that smile, too. There we go. Yeah, yeah, you don't turn away. Don't turn away from the smile. There you go. There you go. But yeah. I, would, I would say check out Lee, Leroy Burgers on Sunday at 4. Yeah, see, he is a disco legend and he is still putting out tunes today. Yeah, get into the lineup. It's been a couple days, it's well worth it. Have you ever been? Oh, oh yeah. Spend both days. It's well worth it's it. It's an experience. It's an experience. All right, I think that was maybe all the time we have for questions. Thank you all Thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank you to the panel. I want to thank you to MCA and Honey Pot Performance Collective for having us today. Thank um, you to Honey Pot.
Um, and so if you all want to stick around, we're going to get ready for the workshop, rearrange a few things, we'll play some music, stick around for the DJ, feel free to grab a drink or a bite. Yes, but they please will be stay and come dance please with us. Please stay for the workshop. Stay come for the workshop. dance with us. It's yeah, about to be dope. Is. Get your motion Stretch on. a little bit. Stretch. <laughs> please stretch. We will not be liable. I don't, don't know when you walked through that door. It was a contract. <laughs> You might hurt yourself. Right. Thank you all for joining us. This is Ray Chardonnay. Thank you. And this is Erica Jarvis. Thanks, y'all. Joe DJ Depressor. Joe Depressor. Eastside.